Johnson's Auto Wax present another polished period of syncopation and exaggeration, musical stuff and masterful nonsense with Rico Marcelli's orchestra, Gail Page, The Three Kings, and Marion and Jim as your hilarious, happy-go-lucky Heidi Hobos, Fibber McGee, and Molly. And we lead off with Marcelli and his men playing. Wait a minute there, son. Huh? I got me a little something here that me and Molly is going to read. Well, is it necessary? No, it's poetry. Oh, I see. Come I on, Molly. <laughs> Come on, Molly. You may fire when ready, McGee. Okay. <clears throat> Listen, my children, and you shall hear. How to get a grin from ear to ear. Use Johnson's wax upon your car. It's easy to you. Go twice as far. Whether it's rainy or whether it's fair. It saves your finish from weather and wear. It saves your time and cuts your expense. Wax and cleaner for 98 cents. With a can of touch-up enamel free. Just take this tip from Molly and me. While you make a note of the wax to buy. Mark Kelly plays New Sun in the Sky. find our two chuckle champions, Bibber McGee and Molly, as they cheerfully charge along in their chug chariot. Did we say cheerfully? Well, just wait. Better slow down a bit, McGee. There's a bridge up ahead. Oh, shucks, Molly, that's a brand new one. Don't have to slow down for that bridge. Oh, <laughs> oh no? What you mean, oh, no? McGee, you'll not only have to slow down, you'll have to stop. It is a toll bridge, it is. A toll bridge? Well, for the... Now, ain't that just my luck? You better pull up, McGee. The man's putting the gate down. Okay. Gotta get them brakes fixed. <laughs> Is this a new toll bridge, mister? That's right, lady. Just open to the public. Well, pay the man, McGee. Don't just sit there and blink. Well, now, wait a minute, Molly. I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> What's the toll, bud? Two bits for the car and driver and nickel for extra passengers. Thirty cents. Thirty cents? kind of steep, ain't it? Oh, I don't think so. Finest bridge in the state. Chucks, who cares? I didn't order it. I'd just soon go across on two planks myself. This the only crossing place? Well, you can go down the river a ways, but it'll take you about 20 miles out of your way. Well, McGee, are you going to go back or do you feel like 30 cents? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say the toll was, bud? 25 cents for you in the car, 5 cents for the extra passenger. 5 cents for the extra passenger. What's the charge for a pedestrian? What do you charge for walking across? Five cents. Oh, well, I guess you can sit still then, Molly. <laughs> Say, McGee, if either of us walked across, could be yourself. 
Come on now, pay the man and let's get going. That'll be 30 cents, mister. No, no, let, let me think a mite. You say it'd be 20 miles out of the way to go down the river to the free bridge, huh? That's right. Let's see now. 20 miles. 23 miles to the gallon. 18 cents a gallon. <laughs> 20, 23rd to 18 cents. That'll be 23 times 18. <laughs> divided by 20. About 16 and 7, 8 cents. <laughs> Plus wear and tear on the car, about 2 cents. <laughs> about 19 cents. 19 cents from 30 cents is 11 cents. 11 cents. <clears throat> we save 11 cents by going the other way, Molly. Sure. And the wear and tear on my nerves would be 12 cents. Come on, pay up, McGee. Okay. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Listen, bud. Yeah? Ain't this here river shallow enough to ford? Sure. It's only a foot deep most of the way across. Oh, it is, huh? <laughs> well, then, Sonny, here's where we kind of take the state for 30 cents. <laughs> McGee, what are you going to do? Ford the river, Molly. There's a nice place oh, right down. Why would they be building this big bridge if you could drive across the water, mister? That's easy, lady. That's <laughs> quicksand. Oh. <laughs> Quicksand, huh? <laughs> you had your lunch yet, bud? Yeah, why? Oh, I just wondered. <laughs> I was going to offer to send the bridge for you once you went to lunch. <laughs> I'd do it cheap for about 30 cents. McGee, will you quit being so inacomical and be on your way? Yeah, you better get a move on, brother. One way or the other. There's another car coming. Hey, up or back up, McGee? 30 cents. Shucks, this here must be one of them there auction bridges. Man. Does everybody have to pay this here toll, bud? Yep, every car traveling under its own power. Would you mind either going across or pulling over, mister? Here comes another car. Uh, oh, well, go on, McGee. Don't you see there's another customer behind you? Well, can you imagine this here? What? The starter's stuck. Oh, I can't get her started. Well, it was working all right this morning, McGee. Come on, brother. We can't wait all day for you. Okay. Come on, come on. Get going, mister. Chuck, this here starter don't seem to work. <clears throat> Wouldn't that just cut you in two and plow you under? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like that there fella back there would have to push me across. I don't care how you get across, but don't hold up the traffic, mister. Uh, excuse me, might well have to ask that there fella back there for a push. And say, I just happened to think of it. If we're being pushed, it won't be under our own power. That won't cost us nothing, will it, bud? Oh, yes, it will. That'll put you in the class of trailers. Uh, Article 6, paragraph 4 says all wheeled vehicles carrying goods to passengers towed or pushed by other wheeled vehicles to be classed as trailers and subject to trailer toll 35 cents. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, McGee. Now see if it'll start. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> well, can you imagine that, bud? <laughs> the starter must have been stuck. Well, here's your 30 cents. Come on, raise the bar. Don't be holding it up. We're in a hurry. Come on. <laughs> And so we leave Bibber and Molly and return to the studio for a song by our lovely to look at and easy to listen to, Gail Page. In the twinkling of an eye All the world was hers So topsy-turvy Everything strange Suddenly changed in the twinkling of an eye Music fell from out the sky Melodies from trees And hurdy-gurdy sang in my ears He's here now, he's here Don't you let him pass you by Shyly, demurely You seem to be purely a dream What a lovely dream Quickly but surely, you held me securely. Believe it or not, I was glued to the spot in the twinkling of an eye. With my heart, I parted in a hurry, darling, I fell so wisely and well in the twinkling of an eye. Love at first sight. I've heard tell of it, oh, it's all right. Of the spell of it, I thought it couldn't be. And then it happened to me. Music fell from out the sky. Melody. 
melodies from trees and hurdy-gurdy is rang in my ear. Here now he's here. Don't you let him pass you by. Shyly, demurely, you seem to be purely a dream. What a lovely dream. Quickly but surely, you held me securely. Believe it or not, I was glued to the star in the twinkling of an eye. With my heart, I parted in a hurry. Darling, I fell so wisely and well in the twinkling of an eye. twinkling of eyes for a moment and talk about the glittering of cars. I realize that a great many of you are already enthusiastic about those sensational new Johnson products, Johnson Auto Wax and Johnson's Auto Cleaner. But if you haven't already discovered this unique method of restoring or preserving the finish on your car, you will be glad to know about Johnson's remarkable, easy to use auto cleaner. Now this is not just another cleaner, it's not utterly unlike anything you've ever before used on your car. You merely pour a little of the velvet white fluid on a cloth, rub it lightly over the finish, also the glass and chromium. It dries almost instantly to a fine white powder. When you wipe it off, you'll find your car clean and shining. You'll marvel at how quickly, simply, and safely Johnson's Auto Cleaner does the work. Actually, it takes much less time than ordinary cleaners and much less energy. Remember, the purpose of Johnson's Cleaner is to restore the finish on your car and positively will not injure it in any way. Let me read you a voluntary statement from an actual user that will mean more to you than anything I might say. Mr. George Rothang of Santa Rosa, California writes, quote, The polish can be applied with such little effort and with such astonishing results that I shall never use anything but Johnson's Auto Cleaner and Johnson's Special Auto Wax on my car. End of quote. Mr. Rothang is only one of hundreds of thousands who have abandoned less efficient methods for the modern, unique Johnson's Wax method. So let me urge you to try it on your car, too. You'll be mighty glad you did. Just, just a mic there, Harpo. I'll, uh... Harlow is the name, if oh, you please. Glad to meet you. <laughs> but uh, you ain't getting that there Johnson's Auto Wax story over so good. Listen, why don't you tell how them Stone Age fellers polished up their ox carts with bunches of grass? And how the Armenians carried stones for their pyramids into chariots polished up with palm oil? And how Napoleon crossed the Delaware into a boat protected by goose grease? And how modern car history has been made with this here Johnson's Auto Act. Well, I... Fibber, your announcement may be swell, but your history is loud, oh. uh, not so good. Oh, is that so? Is that so? Molly, come here. Let's show this young whippersnapper what we know about history. Adam was the first fella that ever was invented. He lived all alone, and he never was contented. They made him out of mud in the days gone by, and they hung him on a fence for to see how he'd drive. Along came Eve, and they both had a battle. He shoved her up a tree to get himself an apple. She got two, and they both had one. And ever since then, all our troubles have begun. Then came Columbus, and he was dead broke. He discovered America. And that's no joke. Then came Dewey and his battleship Maine, and he headed for a certain part of Spain. His ship was in Havana, a little Spanish town. He told his boys, we'll just hang around. Then came the Spaniards, and they blew off the moon. And the United States took the devil out of Spain. Then came the Kaiser to get a view of France. The doughboys turned him back with bullets in his pants. Then came Henry with the hammer and the board, and he took himself a can, and he made himself a cord. We had good times then, and everyone was busy. We all had money to get ourselves a Lizzie. The Ford got old, and Henry got busy, so he took another can and made a lady out of Lizzie. Then came depression and economic talk. We had to send the car and start in to walk. Yep, we had hard times there for quite a spell. <laughs> We've told you the history from Adam on down. Sometimes we're up and sometimes we're down. So the only thing to do is to do the best to do. Because they sure played the devil when they made the first man. Let history in a few, few words. Mark Elliott is mad.
men are about to prove that it's always fair weather when you have a little springtime in your heart. But all the loveliness of spring represented vocally by Gail Page. <laughs> One hop, one skip, and one jump ahead of television, we take our miracle microphone out on Highway 79 to find Fibber and Molly in a filling station taking refuge from a shower. Come on, McGee, let's get going again. A little rain won't hurt us. Shucks, Molly, I don't want to get wet. Go on with you. We're neither sugar nor salt. Well, I don't know, Molly. Maybe I ain't salt to you, but you're sugar to me, baby. <laughs> Go on with your blarney, McGee. <laughs> ah, but I wouldn't have you catch cold. You always was sensitive to dampness. Oh, I don't know, Molly. Chuck's for a feller that's done as much work underwater as what I have. It's uh... not underwater you work, McGee. <laughs> Tis under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, well. Oh, hello there, son. Is the rain over yet? No, not yet. Won't be long now, though. <laughs> Don't lean against that oil tank, lady. You might get some grease on you. <laughs> Thank you, I won't. As I was saying when you come in, bud, I shouldn't mind a little drizzle like this here. Feller that's worked underwater as much as me. Oh, been digging clams? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Just annoying an oyster. Ain't no joking matter, Molly. <laughs> This deep sea diving ain't no child's play, I can tell you. Oh, were you a deep sea diver? Sure. Take off your hat, McGee, and let the man see the water on your brain. <laughs> you know much about deep sea work, son? Not much. Pretty dangerous, ain't it? Oh, not for a fellow that knows how. <laughs> Chucks, I know the bottom of most of the oceans like the palm of the hand. Used to call me Mudcat McGee, the mastermind of the Mediterranean. <laughs> Used to dive for pearls. In a restaurant. In a restaurant. No, no. In the ocean. I'll never forget the time I did. Don't. Don't. The time I went underwater for the green pearls of Gasparuma. Gaspar who? Gasparuma. Oh, Gasparuma was the king of Gahookistan in about 1634. Oh, dear. Noted for his collection of emeralds and pearls. Oh. Only feller in the world that ever owned pearls that was a light green color and a half inch through. 
But they sunk in a storm at sea and was never saw again until his great, 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 great grandson got to thinking about him. <laughs> it probably grated on him. <laughs> so he calls in Mudcat McGee, the mastermind of the Mediterranean. How do you spell it, McGee? M U D A T. Uh, <clears throat> Come to think of it, it's Manila Bay. <laughs> Mudcat McGee, the mastermind of Manila Bay. Well, sir, when the grandson of this here king calls me in, he gives me a map of the Indian Ocean, and he says, Well, Sahib, he says. What? A Sahib, that's what they says over there instead of mister. Sure. <laughs> Pig Latin it is. Oh, no. <laughs> Just their own language. I spoke it real fluid myself. <laughs> Sahib, he says. Aname Wukpa in Kondo Free Scrum? Blum, too, I says, smiling real confident. <laughs> Sakwa, says he, clapping his hands. Meaning maybe it ain't a home, boys, but it's a palace. Oh. <laughs> what did it mean, Sahib? <laughs> <laughs> that there meant that you got the job, son. He was going to pay me 8,674,000 Marcellis for the job of being <laughs> How much is that in American money? Two ninety-eight figures in the foreign exchange. <laughs> no, it was about six hundred dollars. And Saturday's off. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, I got me my diving equipment together, my helmet, my rubber suit, my lead-weighted shoes, and my air rifle. Air rifle? Yeah, for sharks. Yeah, you just shoot the air rifle at their mouths, and the air bubbles gives them the heat cut. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Own idea. Well, sir, come the day I was going to go down for the pearls, and the king says to me, Simbit kwamushta, bitznip. Meaning, be careful, son. Okay, says I. Meaning, okay. <laughs> well, sir. <laughs> With that, they clamps on my helmet. The pump starts clanking and I plunges into the water. Down I went. Down, down, down. Four downs and ten to go. <laughs> I passed the octopus on the way, and I seen him staring at me with them pop eyes of his, and he waved at me with them 40-foot cuticles. Articles. Canticles. Come to think of it, it was a lobster. <laughs> well, sir, I'd located that there wreck boat so good, I landed right smack dab onto the deck. The deck of the Hesper. The deck of the Hesper. No. <laughs> the name of it was the Mock Taboo, meaning sea lion in the hoop stand. <laughs> I like your sea lion in English better, McGee. <laughs> <laughs> I got you there, Brad. Okay. <laughs> well, sir, I looks around, getting used to the gloom. I seen the dim outline of the ship, and I seen the eyes of millions of deep sea fish gleaming and shining like, like, like. What's your best auto polish, Mister? Johnson's Auto Wax. <laughs> Thanks, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, it didn't take me no time to locate them green pearls of Gasparuma. And I give a twitch onto my lifeline, and I says, Watch Mala, Bahumut. It's through the telephone onto my helmet. Oh, you was talking through your hat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I started up after shaking the lead out of my diving shoes. Oh, you had lead in your shoes, too. <laughs> No, but my copper helmet was pinching me a mite. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? The copper helmet was pinching. Ah, it ain't funny, McGee. Okay. Well, sir, the king was pretty grateful for me restoring them green pearls, and... Uh, hey, hey, where are you going, Molly? I got the powder all off my nose under the ocean there, McGee. I'm getting me compact out of the car. I'll be back... Well, that was sure some experience, mister. But the least the king could have done was to give you one of the pearls. Shh. He did. Give me a hat full of them. He did, how much did they bring you? I still got them. I got them right here. But I, I don't like to flash such valuable jewels in front of strangers. Oh, that's all right. Nobody else here. Let's see them. Okay. But now you tell me if you see anybody coming. Yeah. I keep them in this here paper bag just to fool people. Uh -huh. Here. Take a quick look, bud. There. Ain't them Lulus? Big as marble. Hey, no kidding. Betcha. Them are genuine green pearls, ain't they? I thought you was fooling. Who, me? <laughs> ain't them whoppers, though? I never... Oh, hello, Molly. I was just showing this here young fella the... Why don't you give him one, McGee? Don't be so stingy. Wait a minute, Molly. I was just saying oh, that... Oh, he... I wouldn't expect him to give me one of them valuable pearls. Valuable what? Pearls, is it? <laughs> Why, sure, there's nothing but a sack of green candy balls. Green candy balls? <laughs> hey, McGee, where are you going? Say, what's the... Are you got a lot of nerve? <laughs> <laughs>
Kelly and his men discovering with a minimum of effort that when the three kings help out, life is worth living in a great big way. Incidentally, you already know that Johnson's unique new auto cleaner works like a miracle in restoring the finish on your car with a minimum of effort. But if you want to protect that finish from the glaring rays of the sun, from gritty dust and dirt, give it a glistening coat of Johnson's time-saving, car-saving auto wax. This finest quality wax is just soft enough for easy, quick application. Yet when it dries, your car fairly gleams under a brilliant armor as hard as flint. It's the modern, easy way to keep new cars looking new and restore that same luster to old cars. And it isn't necessary to wash your car nearly as often after you've given it a coat of Johnson's wax because the smooth, flawless surface makes it hard for dust and dirt to stick. No matter how old your car may be, a few cents for Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner now will restore the finish, give you a car to be proud of, and will pay big dividends by increasing its resale value. Now, I won't ask you to take my word for all these things. Anyone can make claims. What you want is proof. Do you know that the Pittsburgh Testing Laboratory, famous, independent, and unbiased organization, tested Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner side by side with other methods and proved that the modern Johnson's Wax method takes less time, less muscle work, and gives more lasting results? And here's some good news for you. If you act at once, your hardware store, service station, or auto accessory shop will give you free one regular 40-cent can of black touch-up enamel with every purchase of Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner at the special discount price of only 98 cents. This same offer at the same price is also good in Canada. Now, whether you wax your car yourself or have your regular garage or service station do it, be sure to specify Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. Remember, Johnson's Auto Wax on your car, Tuesday night on your radio. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking. Good night. <laughs> the selection new sun in the sky is from the bandwagon. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>